It's 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV for Friday, September 15th, 2023. I'm Derek Gilbert with our Friday 5, our five big stories of the week. If you're watching on YouTube, we are back on YouTube, by the way, at 5 in 10 is the address. Please subscribe and share that around. And then please download our free app to make sure we don't get canceled. Details coming up before the end of the program. Topic number five this week, of course, is impeachment. Yes, the I word finally spoken by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Republican from California, who announced the launch launch of an impeachment inquiry without a vote by the uh, House of Representatives. Uh, Democrats, of course, protested, but McCarthy just said, see Nancy Pelosi. She set that precedent when she impeached Donald Trump without a vote of the House. In fact, the second time voting to uh, impeaching Trump when he was no longer president of the United States. Anyway, according to McCarthy, representatives James Comer and Jim Jordan will spearhead this to pit bulls on the uh, Republican side of the aisle in the House. Response of the corporate media was predictable. No evidence of wrongdoing. Really? No evidence except for the whistleblower testimony, bank records, Treasury Department memos about concerns over potential money laundering, statements from the Ukrainian prosecutor fired after Joe Biden threatened to block a million, a billion dollar loan guarantee and the head of the Ukrainian energy company that paid Hunter Biden and his friend more than 80 grand a month to do nothing for access to Joe, of course, Uh, the sale of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to a Chinese company linked to Hunter Biden. Uh, And of course, the incriminating information on Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, (laughs) The response from the White House, predictable but disturbing. The White House sent a letter to top U.S. news executives on Wednesday, news reporting operations, asking them to intensify their scrutiny of House Republicans. This is disturbing. Law professor Jonathan Turley of Georgetown University wrote, first, as I have previously noted, and I'm quoting now, the White House is now actively involved in pushing narratives and denying factual allegations linked to the Biden corruption scandal. This is potentially, uh, that's end quote there, uh, this is potentially an abuse of office because uh, the White House then would be using federal employees to counter impeachment efforts, basically for private legal matter. Second, according to Turley, the letter was drafted by Ian Sams, a spokesperson for the White House Counsel's Office. So White House lawyers are now enlisting the media in a counter media campaign against impeachment. The letter removes, quoting from Turley again now, the letter removes any pretense of separation between the Biden personal legal team and the White House Counsel's Office. Third, the letter calls for the media to actively support the White House account. In other words, media should decline to give equal attention to allegations against the Bidens and instead tell the public what the truth is, end quote. And as Turley notes, that's exactly what the media has been doing ever since Joe Biden took office anyway. By the way, Hunter Biden is suing a former Trump White House aide for publishing the contents of the uh, laptop from hell, which contains all sorts of evidence against the Biden family, along with private photos, (laughs) <laughs> X-rated some of them, uh, emails and text messages between Hunter Biden and his business associates uh, and his family. Not coincidentally, this comes immediately after the announcement of the impeachment inquiry. Well, Biden would not be convicted by the Senate. Joe Biden will not. The, the Republicans don't have the votes to convict. And in fact, some Senate rhinos like John Cornyn of Texas, Marco Rubio of Florida, saying that this is all just a big waste of time. Uh, yeah, probably. But I will repeat Nancy Pelosi set the precedent by impeaching Donald Trump the second time after Trump wasn't even president of the United States. So this is all just a big dog and pony show. Grab your popcorn, be entertained, but remember, Christian, our mission is still the same, to make disciples of all nations. And that takes place regardless of who sits in the White House, uh, what goes on inside our house, more important than who's in the White House. Moving on, topic number four, wars and rumors of war. We told you this week about the upcoming NATO exercises, Steadfast Defender. This will take place in um, February, March of next year, expected to be the biggest military exercises in Europe since the end of the Cold War. Now, we also learned this week that uh, of an incident that took place last September, a near shootdown where Russian fighter jets nearly blew a British surveillance jet with 30 crewmen on board out of the sky. This was originally portrayed as a uh, malfunction, but it appears to have been an intentional launch. 
The pilot who fired missiles at the RAF surveillance plane thought he had permission to shoot. The Ministry of Defense in the UK officially accepted that explanation, but the BBC has since learned that the story is a little different. One of the BBC sources said that one of the communications between the Russian ground uh, crews and the, uh, uh, the pilots in the air was to the effect of, you have the target, which the pilot took as permission to fire. Now, the second Russian pilot disagreed. According to the communications monitored by the RAF jet that was in the line of fire, there was an argument that followed between the two pilots and a second missile was launched. Thankfully for the uh, UK crew, the um, missiles failed to lock onto the target and missed. But again, the point is these were intentional launches and misses rather than malfunctions, as was officially reported. This is the kind of thing that can happen when you've got potentially hostile militaries operating in close proximity, which is exactly what will happen next February and March with the NATO drills taking place in Germany and the Baltic states, which border on Russia. Topic number three. Speaking of wars, gender wars in California, newly revised California bill that passed last Friday could make a parent's refusal to affirm a child's transgender identity grounds for denial of custody or visitation rights in a divorce case. This could, in fact, even result in the loss of custody to the state of California itself. This passed the California House, the Assembly, that is, by a vote of 57 to 16, previously passed the Senate by a vote of 30 to 9. This is dystopian, where the state can step in and say, your child, not old enough to drink, smoke, vote, or drive, can tell you what their gender is. And if you disagree, we will take the child from you. There is a spirit behind this. Topic number two. Guns in New Mexico. As we told you earlier this week, last Friday evening, New Mexico's Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, Democrat, issued an emergency order suspending the right of citizens to legally carry firearms in Albuquerque and the surrounding county for at least 30 days. This followed a number of violent incidents uh, involving guns in Albuquerque. In effect, the governor of New Mexico declared that the Second Amendment does not exist due to an emergency. Even far-left anti-gun activists said this went too far and was unconstitutional. Um, The problem here is violent criminals who aren't likely to obey Governor Grisham's order anyway. Uh, Well, a judge this week agreed that uh, Governor Grisham had gone too far. Federal judge in Albuquerque, U.S. District Judge David Urias, blocked the public health emergency to disarm law-abiding citizens. I mean, none of the the attacks that led to Grisham's order involved people holding a gun permit in New Mexico. For criminals, it's already illegal to carry weapons. All Grisham's order would have done was to disarm law-abiding citizens. The problem in Albuquerque, which has suffered a spike in violent crime here in recent years, is that they don't have enough police officers. According to a story from local media two years ago, Albuquerque only has 70% of the officers it needs to effectively police Albuquerque. But instead of addressing the problem, which really originates with the attitude of most Democrats these days toward law enforcement, Governor Grisham's response was to try to uh, disarm law-abiding citizens. Coming up, archaeology is cool, especially when it's in Israel. More on that straight ahead as 5 and 10 continues. We want to make sure that you know how you can get your copy of this incredible one-of-a-kind Bible with expanded apocrypha in the Last Chance Defender Bible Package. Right now, while supplies last, we're offering this giant limited edition Defender Family Bible for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. But if that wasn't enough, we're also including the Defender Publishing's 120 ebook collection absolutely free. Now, this data DVD library collection includes 120 of Defender's all time best selling books featuring authors like Dr. Thomas Horn, Derek Gilbert, Carl Gallup's <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, Sharon Gilbert, Allie Henson, Donna Howell, Terry James, the late great Michael Heiser and so many more, too many to number, 
This DVD library also includes the limited edition Defender Bible with expanded Apocrypha, and all of these books in this collection come in popular ebook formats so you can read them on EPUB, PDF, Kindle, and other handheld electronic devices. It's devices of your choosing wherever you go, including the Bible that we're talking about today. These items hold a retail value of $1,400 if you had to buy all of these ebooks separately. Yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling, so don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special offer. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the last chance Defender Bible package right now. This would make a really, really amazing Christmas gift to you for all of the people in your life that love to do research or your pastor. So buy it now and save it and give it to them for Christmas. Oh, that's a great, yeah, idea. That's a great idea. Just stash it somewhere. Yeah. Item number one today, Holy Land archaeology is cool. We told you earlier this week about the discovery of uh, steps of the Pool of Siloam and how that's being opened to the public for the first time in... Uh, about 2,000 years since the Romans sacked Jerusalem, destroyed the temple. Uh, other archaeological sites in Israel are also yielding some very exciting results. Uh, we are going to be in Albuquerque, by the way, speaking of Albuquerque, this coming weekend. Sharon and I will be attending for the third year in a row the International Symposium on Archaeology and the Bible. And at each of the last two seasons, two uh, conferences, we learned things that we could not share immediately because the information was embargoed, had not yet been peer-reviewed and published. So we're looking forward to some more uh, exclusives here uh, this, this year that we'll uh, be able to tell you eventually. Uh, anyway, one of the presenters at the previous two conferences, uh, Dr. Scott Stripling, who is the one who found the lead curse tablet at the site of Joshua's altar on Mount Eval. Uh, he will be one of the speakers at this coming conference, and he's also been doing work at another very interesting site, historically and biblically important, Shiloh, or Shiloh, as uh, it's pronounced in Hebrew. Uh, Dr. Stripling has uh, discovered maybe, maybe the site where the tabernacle stood for more than three centuries. Not, he's not prepared to say that just yet, but during the most recent season, they did find the outlines of a building that matches the dimensions, the biblical dimensions of the tabernacle of Moses. So we look forward to talking with him about that. Uh, once again, we find that with each new archaeological discovery in Israel, the historical narrative of the Bible is confirmed. Very exciting. And once again, proof that archaeology is cool. Skywatch TV depends on your support. Why we do what we do? It's to support the work at Whispering Ponies Ranch. This year's camping season is done, but we're gearing up for 2024. And uh, for your gift of any amount during the month of September, no minimum, we will send you a copy of David Hebner's book, True Power, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles still happen. A good friend of ours just had their 12-year-old son miraculously healed from what might have been a traumatic head and head and spinal injuries. It's a remarkable story. A young boy fell out of a tree onto concrete with his head. And um, between Friday when it happened and Tuesday when he went back to the doctor and they were preparing to life flight him to a major city's hospital, uh, the, the scans are clear. No fractures. It's it, it, these things still do happen. That is true power. David Hebner goes into it in this book, and we will send you a copy of the book for your gift of any amount, if you're in the U.S. or Canada. For more information, check out our uh, website, skywatchtv.com. You'll find a red donate button there, or you can go to skywatchtvstore.com, follow the link there, or call us toll-free, 844-750-4985. This week on Skywatch TV, we're talking about the Apocrypha, the expanded Apocrypha that's part of Skywatch TV's Family Defender or Defender Family Bible. This is a hardcover edition of the Defender Bible that was previously published. This is a limited time offer, and uh, we talk about why the Apocrypha, including the Book of Enoch, are so important to understanding Christian theology. Our broadcast schedule over the air is 
published at skywatchtv.com slash channels. But you can always watch the program online at skywatchtv.com. Our website has all of our video content there. You can watch it at our Roku or Apple TV channels. Just make sure you've got that channel on your set-top box. You can check it out at the uh, Skywatch TV channel on YouTube for the main program at Skywatch TV Now rumble.com slash skywatch tv or better yet download the free skywatch tv app to your smartphone or tablet that gets all of our video content right into your hands whether it's an ios android or amazon kindle fire device many other features on the app as well again it is absolutely free and we have links to the app stores for the app that's right for your device posted at skywatchtv.com look for the link in the top menu bar thank you for watching as we keep watch I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.